smile? Yes, oh, how beautiful. And it's interesting because uh, my story will be starting at a point in my life when I did not feel beautiful at all. So just listen, it's just a simple story. I just want to share with you the work that God has done in my life and how He has used me to touch other people. Hi, this is Abby the Baldi. <laughs> At four years old, I had this hair loss condition called alopecia areata. It started with patches in my head, and then eventually I lost my eyelashes, my eyebrows, and I was completely bald. Um, my parents didn't know exactly what to do. All they knew was that they had to protect their kid and give them pretty hats or wigs eventually to make the girl, the little girl, feel like she was she belongs and she's normal and she's beautiful but of course going to school looking this way caught other people's attention in a negative way and because of that I experienced bullying people would pull my hats tatawagin nila ako kalbo 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 it means bald in Filipino and growing up that was a very negative term for me it's normal to say for other people but it really broke my heart to hear people say that I was kalbo so it was hard because I grew up knowing and believing that I wasn't normal and that I wasn't beautiful as everyone else. Hence, it affected the way that I saw my life and the opportunities that are going to be present in the future, the potential of having a love life. Who would want to be with a girl that has no hair? And then eventually, in high school, I learned to wear wigs. And as you can see, but even the process of finding the right wig was very hard because people would say, oh, your wig looks nice. I would feel like I have hair. But it actually made people look at me more and see and talk about me more because they could tell that it was a wig. So I thought I, thought I was being okay, I was being normal, but in fact, it brought more attention to who I was. And it was hard because... I would always ask God and my parents why I had to be the one to grow with this condition. I had to have this condition and to not have hair. And one very vivid experience that I had in the past was me and my mom was watching a healing crusade on TV. And then everyone was getting healed. Oh, praise God. Oh, I'm healed. And I was watching. And then I looked to my mom and I said, Mom, bakit si God hindi niya ako pinapagaling? I said, God, why isn't God making me well? Why did I have to be the one with this condition? And since I was a little girl, I've had that question. Why me? What is the purpose of me having alopecia? I didn't know anyone else with a condition. Ako lang yung alam kong nakasumbrero, nakawig. I, wala namang, no one would approach me to encourage me and say, it's going to be fine. You could still pursue your dreams. You could still achieve whatever it is that you want in your life. No one, had, no one was telling me that because I couldn't, no one had alopecia. I didn't know anyone with alopecia. So it was just interesting because I also got very active in church. And once I attended a youth camp and the main message of the camp was, you know what? In the end, what's more important is who you are on the inside. God sees you not on the external, but on the kind of person that you are and the heart that you have. So that really encouraged me in a sense that, you know, hey, I thought growing up, people would always see me as the girl without hair. But in fact, there's so much more to who I am. There's so much more to my personality, to my character. And I guess it is worth knowing. I guess it is worth sharing. So that gave me that sense of, confidence and sense of security in myself but in the end I would still hide behind my hats and my wigs I would never show people what was underneath the bald me and then in 2012 because I'm a singer I'm an artist I was actually shooting a music video and I had long hair and then the director and my manager at that time was like hey um, nice song but your hair is not moving it's so obvious that you're wearing a wig. And it broke my heart because I just wanted to sing. I just wanted to share. I just wanted to share my music. I wanted to share who I am. But people are so fixated with my hair. What am I going to do? So um, it's great that everything else is just a click away. In the middle of crying at night, 
wondering what I should do about my life, I just typed in bald girls and alopecia. And I saw women from different parts of the world giving interviews, sharing to people, hey, I'm beautiful, I'm confident, with or without hair. And they were doing that bald, with big smiles on their faces. And so when I saw that, I couldn't believe that they were so happy. Because I grew up thinking that alopecia was negative. I grew up thinking that it was something that I should be ashamed of. It was ugly. Boys wouldn't like me. Well, actually, there have been experiences when boys did not like me because I didn't have hair. So I had all these experiences, and for me, alopecia was a weakness. It was something to be kept hidden. It was something to be ashamed of. And then all of a sudden, I see these women from different parts of the world proclaiming to everyone else that they have this condition. So when I saw that, it kind of it, it punched my heart and it challenged me in a way that, you know, if they could do it, how come I'm still here? They've accepted it, how come I'm still uncertain and insecure about my condition? So during that day, when I was watching, I had an epiphany of some sort and I said, you know, in the middle of crying, Lord, is this the reason why I have alopecia? Because here in the Philippines, there's no awareness. People don't know about the condition. There's no support group. There's no organization. Simply because those with the condition are afraid of what other people are going to say about them. If you're afraid, if you're insecure, then why tell someone? Then why be open about it? So I said, okay, I'm done hiding. September 2012. I said, maybe this is the time to get over this, to rise above this, and tell people that there is such a thing and that I have it. So September 25th, I decided to do an alopecia awareness concert, wherein I would show everyone what was underneath the wig. So it would, my, it would be my first time to be bald in front of people and televised on TV too for the very first time. But before that, I did something very simple just to cause awareness because people didn't know what alopecia. I would always tell this story because it's so funny. I got a tweet one time, alopecia areata awareness. And they were like, is that some sort of pasta? What kind of food is that? I'm like, oh, okay, this just shows that there is something to be done here in the Philippines. People really don't know about this. So, oh, sorry. So before the coming out bald, I started to do an awareness campaign. And everyone has a cell phone, everyone likes taking selfies. I said, please help me raise awareness by posting a photo of you doing this. Alopecia awareness, two letter A's. And I asked my friends to do it, they wanted to support me, and then all of a sudden, a couple of days after, I got 500 photos, 1,000 photos, it started to spread. And it also reached different parts of the world. That's Charlie Villanueva, he's an NBA player who also has alopecia. Josh Stone, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg, the campaign reached Snoop Dogg, and Curtis, Filipino celebrities here. And I didn't know that something as simple as a photograph would be able to not just cause awareness, but because you know with awareness comes understanding. When people know about the condition, then they understand the people going through the condition, and so they're less judgmental. They help, they support. And at the same time, for those with alopecia, example, imagine me in hiding. Then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, people are posting all these awareness photos. That's me, I have alopecia, so maybe I shouldn't be ashamed of having this condition. So it spread and it reached different parts of the world, and it was just really a major, major turning point in my life. On September 25th, I did Strip. It's a, an awareness concert wherein I took off my bandana or my wigs for the very first time and showed everyone that I was bald. And it was a, I just wanted to share because um, growing up, I knew that I couldn't change the situation. The circumstances was that I did not have hair, but I could choose what, how to respond to it. I could be in self-pity mode, or I could say, hey, you know, that's not going to hinder me from living out my dreams and my passions. In fact, I could use this to create positive change and impact other people's lives. By rising above my own fears and limitations, I was able to accept it. And now that I've learned to accept it, it's my turn to help other people reach that point of acceptance. See, it doesn't stop with me. Ooh, great, I'm okay, but then what? 
I guess that's one thing that um, some people fail to, you know, really internalize and realize is that sometimes, yes, it's great when you get inspired and change happens in your life, but that's also a call for you to make a change in other people's lives, to touch other people's lives. And all it took for me was courage and a leap of faith. Um, before I came out bald, I just want to say it was the most one of the scariest things that I've done in my life. When I was backstage before I came for to sing in front of everyone without hair, I was crying because I was so afraid. I was asking God, God, am I really going to do this? Why am I doing this? Why are you tugging my heart to do this? But what I realized is that sometimes the scariest things, that's when we are most called to be fearless. That's when we are most called to be courageous. It means that that particular thing is meant just for you and only you could be brave enough to do it. So are you going to scour and be shy and afraid or are you going to be bold? Three years after, well, that was me with no hair. And well, two years after, um, we already have a group it's Alopecia Philippines, and it's just amazing because even now that I look at this, there were like 10, some were not in the photo, but 10 or 15 of us. That was the second year that I came out, and the third year, there was 80, and then the next year, right now, there are around 200 to 300 of us in Alopecia Philippines. And I would have never thought that so many people were didn't have hair. <laughs> so, and dami pala namin. And all they were waiting for someone to say, hey, come on. It's okay. You could go through it. You could rise above it. And I guess, yes, um, just some of the things that I learned. You can turn what is ugly into beautiful. I learned this from church and my friends. So, turn your weakness into strength. You could turn your mess into a message, your test into a testimony being a victim to being victorious and from being broken to brave. Just last July, I was invited to speak at the National Alopecia Areata Foundation Conference and to speak in a whole assembly full of people with alopecia. And for me, in 2012, being so afraid and not knowing what to do but just trusting in God, years after, I saw that just taking that leap and just taking that courageous step could actually bring you into great heights so you could touch more people. So I guess my final thought is just embrace your uniqueness. I, I'm here speaking in front of you because I learned to accept and rise above my condition. If you want to change the world, I've always wanted to change the world, I realized that you can't do it by looking outside and thinking, what's everyone else doing? What, how could I be a part of that? No, but you change the world by knowing your own world. What is your story? What makes you unique? What are the pains that you've been through? What are the experiences that you had to go through? Those are the things that are going to make you you. And when that is so solid, then that has the impact. That is the one that is relevant, that is significant enough to cause change. And so now, as a singer, I just want to share with you a song that I wrote. It's called Beautiful, and it was inspired by my hair loss condition. I imagine singing it to the young Abby who was bald and crying and didn't know why she had to have alopecia. So, there. I hope you listen and enjoy the song. And may it touch you just like how other people touch my life.
so much and just learn to embrace your own beauty and your uniqueness and may you all have a beautiful day today thank you